The original Luigi's Mansion came out for the GameCube in 2001 to an at the time lukewarm reception. It was a weird decision for Nintendo to make, their previous launch titles were happy go lucky Mario games, but Luigi's Mansion is very different. The game actually started out as a tech demo to show off what the GameCube can do, and it's still a pretty good looking game today. Later it was reworked into a full game. Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo, I think your game may be cursed. The game in its entirety is kinda creepy. The muted colours, the lighting, it makes for a creepy atmosphere overall. The story is as follows. Luigi won a mansion in a contest he never entered. He thinks the smart thing to do is not to decline because it's very shady, but to go to the mansion with his brother Mario. When Luigi gets there, oh no, Mario's gone missing in the mansion, oh no. Iga tells Luigi that the mansion just appeared one day and that Mario went in there but hasn't returned. King Boo trapped Mario in a painting and Luigi has to fight King Boo and free him. The main gist of the game is revealing ghosts' hearts by shining them with your flashlight and using the Poltergust 3000 to suck them up while slamming the stick in the opposite direction they are pulling. And it's very satisfying. I have to say though, sometimes you reveal their heart and you still can't suck them up. There are also occasional rooms where ghosts are invisible, but you can see them in a reflection. These are really cool but only appear a few times in the game. Occasionally, there are more humanoid ghosts where you have to solve a small puzzle to reveal their hearts. These ghosts are called portrait ghosts. When you suck them up, they give pearls. The faster you capture them, the bigger and thus more valuable their pearls are. Their puzzles can range from fire on obvious candlestick to waiting, though there are exceptions. Madame Clairvoy actually wants to go back in her painting. Not before you find Mario's stuff and give it to her. See, Mario packs, but only one piece of all the clothes he has. One hat, one glove, and one shoe. Oh yeah, he leaves a letter and a star around too. I really like how you get the star. You look through a telescope and boom, space. This makes no sense, but looks really cool. Luigi presses a button and releases a ton, 50 to be exact, boos into the mansion. And King Boo. How they trap Mario before even being released? I have no idea. By the end of the game, though, these boos can have 300 health, which makes getting them an absolute nightmare. They will always go to the exact rooms that you either haven't unlocked yet, or the rooms that are difficult to get to from where you are. At least they have funny names. The music is not only phenomenal, it's dynamic too. When you're in the dark holes, Luigi hums the theme. When you're in a cleared room, he'll whistle it. And when in a ghost filled room, the ghosts sing it. How delightfully creepy. Based on the amount of money you collect, you'll get a rating for your mansion. F is just a tent, I absolutely love this. Later on, the game started to get a following, so Nintendo sent out next level games to develop a sequel. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, released in 2013 for the 3DS, it is very different from the original. The biggest difference being the mission based structure, which was divisive to say the least. The problem with the structure is exploration, after every mission you go back to EGAT's lab. This makes exploring, well, very difficult. Speaking of EGAD, SHUT UP! EGAT calls you way too much. The story, like the original, is very short and simple. The ghosts in Evershade Valley are friendly because of the Dark Moon, until King Boo breaks it and the ghosts become hostile. So you need to retrieve the six pieces of the Dark Moon. 3DS sadly doesn't have a second stick, which makes aiming a lot more difficult. Dark Moon fixes this by having you aim up and down with X and B, which is easier to get used to than you think. Luigi also has a ton more character. The original gave him some character, but in this game, every scene he's in is hilarious. There are five mansions instead of the original's one. That allows the atmosphere to change in every mansion. Gloomy Manor is generic, 
haunted towers are themed around plants, and Old Clockworks is very mechanical, Secret Bind is snow, and Treacherous Mansion is a bit of everything. Every mansion also has a boss, so no portrait ghost this time around. They are fine, arguably more interesting than the portrait ghosts, but one just stares, why? The chilly white fight is atrocious, it just doesn't. This is not fun. Dark Moon also added a lot of new stuff to play around with. There's the straw bulb, which makes stunning ghosts a lot more satisfying. A more powerful burst by pressing A when catching ghosts with a portal cost 5000, which is also very satisfying. And the dark light can reveal invisible objects which can sometimes contain booze. Speaking of which, there's one hidden in every mansion in an invisible object, still having the wacky names of the original. There are also 13 gems hidden in every mansion for a total of 65, which adds some replay value to the game. The side goal is again to get as much cash as you can. This doesn't affect the ending, but you can buy upgrades with the money you get. There's also an online mode, Scarescraper. It surprised me to still see people on it to this day. It's fine, but Luigi's Mansion isn't the first game I'd say I'd want to play online. Overall, a good addition. Also Poltopop, he is so cute. In 2017, Nintendo partnered with Sega and Capcom to make Luigi's Mansion Arcade. It's a small part of Dark Moon's Mansion with IRL Poltergeist 5000s. You can play with single player or with two players. I don't have much to say about this one as I've never played it, but it seems a good amount of fun. In 2018, Nintendo decided to make a remake of the original game for the 3DS, even though the Switch was already out for a year. Why did they do this? I don't know, it's probably easier to make a remake on the 3DS than a HD remake on the Switch. Luigi's Mansion 3 was also in development at the time, so this can also be why. There aren't that many differences, but the ones there are are pretty significant. You can choose to use Dark Moon's straw bulb instead of the normal flashlight, which is fine, not a bad addition by any means, especially for people who are used to Dark Moon's controls. The gallery has been completely redesigned, and allows you to refight portrait ghosts again for new platinum portraits. Guigi has been added to allow for multiplayer, and it's fun. The remake also has to deal with a lack of the two sticks on the 3DS. Instead of doing what worked in Dark Moon, they decided motion controls was the better option. Motion controls are optional in Dark Moon, but here they are basically required. Not entirely, you can use the D-pad, but you have to hold your 3DS like a crab to actually do so. And that brings me to Luigi's Mansion 3, the reason I made this video. Let us start with the story. Mario, Luigi, Peach and three toads have been invited to a hotel called The Last Resort. Because this has already happened twice, they think it's a good idea to go there. Well, boo hoo, it's haunted. What did you think? Wait, there's a monarch here, Peach, what is wrong with you? King Boo trapped them in paintings and Luigi has to save them. I again. To be honest, this game is one of the best animated games I have ever played. Look at Toad, he should not be driving, how can he even see? The straw bulb and dark light return from Dark Moon. But there's also a lot of new stuff. The slam is basically just the extra burst, but more violent. With the suction shot, you can break objects in the environment and things ghosts are holding. And Gooigi is Luigi, but made out of goo making him able to crawl through pipes, drains, bars and the like. The game is devised into floors. Every floor has a different theme, for example, castle, disco, movie studio and pyramid. This is a good way to combine the big one mansion feeling from the original and the different themes of the five mansion structure of Dark Moon. I also like that the elevator music is a jazz remix of the main theme from Dark Moon. Speaking of the game's music, it's similar to style in the Dark Moon soundtrack. It makes sense considering the game's composers worked on both games' soundtracks. 
The game has a lot of stuff to interact with, though that makes physics glitches a lot more prevalent. There's also even more cash to collect, which you can spend in EGAT's new shop for golden bones, which give you an extra life, and the gem and boot tracker. EGAT also has a run now, which is way too funny for its own good. The Luigi's Mansion series is 18 years old now. That is a very long time, especially considering there have only been three full games, a remake and an arcade game. This series will always be close to my heart and I'm excited to see what next level games will do next with the series. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell. If there's anything I inevitably forgot to mention, please leave it in the comment section below. See ya!